life. Yeah. Yes, it ain't over. Well, Brother Robert Earl Dean, Woo! I want you to you know. You got me stirred up today. Jesus. We got a good interview today. And, you know, I kind of want to brag because I received my doctorate when she received her doctorate. And she was on the diocese. And we actually was on the same stage Took pictures oh together, everything. Then she came to San Diego. Yeah, she came to San Diego with Dr. Eric Chambers. With, yeah. yeah. So mm-hmm. I am excited about this interview today. Long time in the making. But God's time. You, you feel what I'm saying? Is impeccable. Because, you know, this is one of the sweetest, humblest persons in the industry. Yes. You know? Yes, I, I agree. When we were in um, the Stellar weekend mm-hmm. and we were in Vegas, and I think we were at the Hezekiah Walker mm-hmm. um, Choir Fest. And I introduced myself to her and shook her hand, and she was very, very kind. She don't even remember, yeah. but she was she was dressed to mm-hmm. a T, but she was kind, too. And, and you know what was another thing I noticed about her? What? She kind of whispered, you know, uh, saving that voice. She, Hello, how are you? Right. And, and I was like, <laughs> ooh, she a singer because she's a she, singer. she was whispering, holding it, right. so that when she when she got to the, the stage, she, she knew She was exactly. ready. Yes. Come on now. Robert L. Dean, who do we have with us today? Ladies and gentlemen, I have been a follower of this young lady since 1995 with Victor Johnson. Practice what you preach. I was mm-hmm. in college at the University of Arkansas at Pine Bluff, and I have the VHS of her singing with this choir, and mm-hmm. I was mesmerized then. And what came to mind, ladies and gentlemen, was I said, this woman is anointed, but she's smooth. She's, she's good for gospel, because everybody don't have to be, you know, hard and, uh-huh. and, 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 and get that grit, which mm-hmm. is all has its place. But she was smooth, and I referred to her as the gospel Roberta Flack. And uh-huh. Roberta Flack is one of the greatest voices yes. of our time. And ladies and gentlemen, you know her. You've heard her voice with one of the most amazing worship songs. I just want to praise you. Yeah, and, and you know, and my, you just heard it ain't over. Yeah, and you know my thing. I want God. I uh, want God. I, I, that that one right that there. That right there. This, oh, I mean, it knocked me out. And I'm telling you, you know as well mm-hmm. as I know that when certain people are at a certain level to mm-hmm. me, I I push, push, mm-hmm. push. This is. Something that we've been waiting for for a while. Now, Robert, we ain't gonna tear up today. We, oh, I'm we, not. We, I was we, tearing we up with the worship. Okay. okay. Now, We're now, now the professional, now okay. the professional hat okay. is coming on. All right. This is none other than Marette Brown Clark, ladies and gentlemen. This is one of the greatest voices, and I mean this of our time. The timeless music and the delivery. She is one of the ad lib queens. They mm-hmm. call some other people the ad lib queen, mm-hmm. but this is one of the ad lib queens for me. Yes, Miss Marette Brown Clark. Welcome to the Wake Up Morning Show with Dr. LT, Robert Earl Dean. I am so grateful to be here and like listening to what you're saying about me. First, I'm turning around going, Well, who are they talking about? <laughs> but I just I cannot believe um that God has blessed me so much. And I'm finally here. Like, thank you for not uh, kicking me to the curb. When you, when you love somebody, you, 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 you walk through the good, the difference, the imbalance and everything. And we love you for real. Thank you. I know you do. I I can feel that love. Thank you so much for having me. And good morning. Uh, And my fellow uh, doctor. Yes. Yes. I, I am. I am so tickled about you. Uh, my wife just received her honorary doctorate on Sunday mm-hmm. from another institution, mm-hmm. but um, she had the opportunity to meet you when we were getting our doctorate. And the one thing that she kept saying over and over again, she's so sweet. Yes. She's mm-hmm. so sweet. And being that she's the program director here, she makes right. sure that everything that you have is everything. in high rotation um, because we believe that. When people, when you're a minister of the gospel mm-hmm. and, and we see you off the stage mm-hmm. and and, uh, and you're the same off the stage as you're on the stage, we automatically want to support and see you do well. Um, I was just recently having a conversation with uh, Dr. James Jazzy Jordan. Yes. And he started just singing your praises yes, he did. and how much he oh, wow. loved you and all the things that um, he looked forward to for you in your career. So I'm excited about this powerhouse that we have today. Yes. That is, oh, Lord, the program director done came on now. And she says, I love Marette Brown Clark. So yes. Everybody's ungathered because yes. you have come. <laughs> so uh, I'm just going to jump into it and just ask, how did you start off in this music industry? 
Oh gosh. So in the in I started off singing uh in my family with my family group. I had my father uh fancied himself as James Cleveland. Mm-hmm. And so uh he had we had four children, uh two boys, two girls, and we were every singing organization that James Cleveland ever sang with. We mm-hmm. were Southern Cal, we right. were the Cleveland singers, that was us. And so I'm thankful for my father and my mother for putting that seed in us and that gospel music experience in us. Drag to church, drag to church. Yes. But you know, at that moment when you're a kid, you just you don't understand what's mm-hmm. going on. Mm-hmm. Um, and it wasn't until I went to college um, and got uh, got away from my family. And I joined the Gospel Choir College because, again, that's what I do. That's, I sing, I eat, I sleep, I sing. And so, um, but it wasn't until I got in the Gospel Choir and I started singing that I realized that what I had did have something to it because mm-hmm. these were strangers. Yes. These were other uh, people my age that were looking at me like, you know, listening to me sing and they were crying and they were like pushing me. And I was like, well, everybody here sings like, don't push mm-hmm. me, just push everybody. Right. But it was something about what I was doing mm-hmm. um, at the time. And so that's kind of what got my ear tickled to, okay, well, maybe there's something to this. And mm-hmm. after I graduated from college, worked a year, had a boyfriend that turned out to be my husband, mm-hmm. uh, had a car, a job, friends, a great church home. I just asked God, I was like, this is all great, but what is it that you put me here to do? And he said, I put you here to, since I saved you, it's time for you to go get somebody else. And I was like, well, how do I do that? And he was like, it's your voice that you're singing. And so that's literally how it started. The pursuit of trying to get as many people to come to Christ through something that I sang was the pursuit of my entrance into the music business. And so I've been doing this, oh gosh, uh, this is 25 years um, from the days of Jazzy meeting me. And even before that, Mm -hmm. with Richard Smallwood, with Timothy Wright, with Daniel Winans, um, uh, just having those opportunities and then my solo opportunity. Okay. So, you know, you done dropped some nuggets. So I got to go back. I got to go back and ask some (laughs) questions. First question is going to be, uh, what college did you go to? I was going to ask that too. I went to the University of Maryland. Uh, in College Park. I'm originally from New York. And so I came down to Maryland to go to college again. And I ended up staying like I'm still in Maryland because this is where I found the answer to my life's work. This is where I found my husband. This is where I found um, Uh, found Jesus in a real way. Yeah. The The, terrapins. uh, He's with the terrapins. Yes, the terrapins. Good basketball program. But but I got to ask more questions. So you know how singers are. Singers attract people. Mm -hmm. How did, of all the men that was like saying hi, how did your husband, your boyfriend, become your husband and weed and get through all the other brothers was trying to Because she was a singer. She was a singer on campus. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Uh, You know, I don't know, actually. Well, he was a DJ. So uh-huh. he would like play music at all the parties, right? Mm-hmm. And so I was an equal opportunity uh, employer in my music uh, there. So I was in the gospel choir on Thursday nights, but then I was at the party on Friday. Right. <laughs> uh, uh, you know, right. God, God, will, God will bless you even through your uh, college life. That's your, college there, life. There you go. And That's so I life. think our love for music just kind of connected us like that. And I didn't think anything of it at the time, um, but it certainly has paid off uh, even now. Wow. So being in a college choir, I too was in a college choir at HBCU though. And how did that experience help you even now? Because you know, people don't realize, but college choirs can Mm -hmm. sing, sing, and many major names have come out of these particular college choirs. Well, again, it, it really just kind of helped me to know that, um, and just this, this is just in my instance, mm-hmm. other people join the college choir for whatever their experience is, but I just joined because one, it was something that I knew to do. You mm-hmm. wake me up, I'm singing. So right. it wasn't like a hard sell for me. It was just easy to go for that fellowship, that friendship mm-hmm. for people who least wanted to kind of have a foothold in uh, Jesus, right? But right. for me, what it did was, again, it was there were strangers and just the people around me um, would be like, you should go sing or come, come on, you got to hear this. You got to hear her. And mm-hmm. I was like, they don't know me from a can of paint so that they would sign on 
to what they heard coming out of my mouth. Right. Didn't know anything about my background. Right. Didn't know anything about me. But they gravitated to the voice, the sound, the anointing that was coming out of my mouth. Even before I knew what it was, right. they recognized it. And so that really has been my blessing throughout my career that even um, no matter what I do, no matter what I sing, God always seems to show up and anoint it. And that's where my sweet spot is. And I wouldn't take anything for that. That's okay. the God's honest truth. So I want to say we, we got some situations happening right now on social media, Facebook. Yes. Uh, let, let me just read some things to you because, you know, they're being demanding this morning. But here's one that says with um, she says it says, I'm with you on that much love. And then it says that anointing is present in, in everything, everything she, she sings. sings. Mm -hmm. Now we got, we have somebody that says, now I know you don't normally do this, but, but can you play that song again before today's show in? That song is really touching and ministering today. Mm -hmm. Thank you. We have, um, we have, uh, 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 all the people that are on here now are just commenting literally on how your music is helping them through. Let's talk about the pandemic. How mm. how did your ministry, uh, I mean, Navigate. literally skyrocket mm -hmm. because people, you know, that I, I Want God, whoo, that was my song on the first part of the pandemic. So tell mm. me, how did you find your music impacting the world during the pandemic? So the thing, so what you hope your music does, anything that you do, mm -hmm. whether it's music, whether, whatever your vocation is, whether you're a chef, whether you're a minister, whether you're uh, a, a designer, you hope that what you do transcends where you're able to do it. Mm -hmm. And so what the pandemic showed me was that whether I'm standing up in front of people singing it or whether I'm on a Zoom or on a video singing it, that what I do can transcend through the phone, through the video, mm -hmm. through a Zoom call and touch people at the point of their need. And I saw that come truth uh, to life. I saw that truth come to life. And what I also found was that we are our worst critic, right? right. And so we don't we don't believe the hype or we shouldn't believe the hype right. about ourselves. Mm -hmm. I hear my voice and I'm like, oh, you should have did that better. You should have right. did that right. different. You should have sang it like this. But at that time when I needed a word, I found that the very songs that I was singing for you were the songs that I needed for me. Amen. Songs like angels watching over yeah. me when my yeah. whole family was holed up in the house. And I saw that God kept making provision. He kept supplying every need according to his riches. riches. He Come kept on. dispatching angels to cover my house to keep us from COVID yes. and just the other things of the pandemic. And so those things started ministering to me. My own songs, my own voice started ministering to me. And I was like, God, I thank you. Yes. I want God yes. again. Take everything away. But you leave me, Jesus, you leave me with the Savior, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Take it all away. And I still have enough to start, to continue and to finish this race that he's called me to. So, um, and again, I just want to praise you forever and ever. That song went viral over the pandemic. People were using that song to praise through a pandemic. Wow. Like what? So I can't even um, articulate enough how blessed I am to see that in real time, that something that I, an offering that I gave to God and I asked him to bless it mm -hmm. has blessed people before the pandemic through the worst of times, the pandemic. And then now that we are seemingly coming out of it, mm -hmm. um, that they are still pulling these songs and still using songs that I've recorded to bless them. So help me with this. Okay. I want God. Now, now, yeah. I, I, I'm trying to tell you that song it's right there. It's powerful. One of the, one of the I best. I mean, you you have a, a plethora of music. Yes. But when you sung that song, I in my heart of hearts said, "All she wants is God. God. I want that type of, you know, yes. pull." Mm -hmm. Where did that song come? Did you write it? Uh, where did? How did you get that? That I mean, it was just straight up this powerful. So I just want to know a little bit more about that song. So I did actually write it. I'm trying to get through it without crying. Um, I did write it. And that's probably the song that's closest to 
whatever people think that I am, whatever mm -hmm. your perception is of me, whatever your opinion is of me, uh, whether you think I, uh, I can sing or not, whether I behave properly or not, uh, whatever it is that you have uh, think of me, I know that God thinks well of me. And for him to think well of me, even on my lowest moments, yes. my dirtiest moments, mm -hmm. my crappiest moments, yes. for him to think well of me makes me want to serve him, makes me want to live for him, makes me want to give him my entire life. And I realized that that same God that now I have experience with, because I am, you know, I've been through some things. Yes. I've seen them, some things. Mm -hmm. I've watched him carry me mm -hmm. through some things I deserve and some things I didn't deserve. So I've got that, that history with him. But even when I was a little girl, and that's a true statement in that song, I could, I could feel him while I was singing and I would cry when I was done singing. You get most kids cry before they sing because they don't want to sing. They're like, no, no, no I don't want to do it. And, you know, stop calling me up here. I don't want to do this. But I would cry afterwards because God's spirit would just be on me. And I didn't know what it was at the time. But as I've grown, as I've gotten older, I know what that is. It's the presence of the Lord. So anything um, that I want, it's got to have him in it. I want him more than anything, more than stuff, purses, mm -hmm. uh, acclaim, shoes, mm -hmm. uh, um, anything. I want him more because, again, if I've got him, I've got everything that I need. Yes. And the rest of the stuff mm -hmm. is the icing on the cake. Right. That's what I say. Listening to you, I'm, it's almost like I'm hearing my story. Because I, too, mm -hmm. started singing like you. And as a child, I was singing with the adults in the Church of God in Christ. And I would cry after I sung. She said, as she well. said me too. And and I wasn't afraid to sing. I was the kid who would put his hands up when they needed a lead singer. Nice. And the anointing would just flow that it would almost be like an out of body experience. Yeah. So I can identify with you. And I must say, you were your ad lib comes from a place to where you can tell it's identifiable to you, that you're singing about what you've been through, and it just keeps flowing. It just keeps flowing. You, 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 you recite the Bible a lot, and then you, you do your own personal experiences. Let's talk about good ad-libbers, because a lot of times people make the ad-lib queen, the ad-lib this, but you have a genuine ad-lib that just keeps flowing. Um, so, uh, wow. That definitely is a gift. I think you were talking earlier about how everybody has like their different style, their different gift. And so as a singer, um, you know, it's hard. Like you want that, um, you want that response when you sing, right? So uh, immediately if somebody squalls or somebody hits a real high note mm -hmm. or real low note or does something that's, you know, like magical, the crowd is like, ah. and so what I noticed when I sing was that people weren't necessarily giving me that, <sighs> you know, mm -hmm. they were literally when I, in fact, they were literally when I was done, they looked sad. They looked mad. They looked like, you know, I don't believe we had to sit through this. But what I didn't know was people hang on to the words that I say yes. for whatever that reason is. And I'm telling you, God gives me, everything to say every time when I minister a song um I think that's why it's a little bit frustrating to record because when I record it's just in that moment but every time I sing the song hence it's never the same experience. it's for it's God it's for where I am it's for who needs to hear a certain word and so he'll tell me if I say a say a line he'll be like hang on that somebody needs to hear it and I hang on it I might repeat it and repeat it and repeat it and that person will know that it's for them is a rhythmic thing to it as well uh, I'm musical I play the piano I study classical piano I study voice and so there's that rhythmic thing knowing how to insert it but it it definitely is the gift that God has given me and I have accepted that as what he's given me and how he's given me to do it. It's three singers that that I watch and they keep saying the same word and it wears you out. You, Yolanda Adams and Lisa Page. Brooks. Yeah, oh, my favorite. You three are the three that yeah. will take a line and yeah. keep hitting it because the more we hear things and the more we see things, 
they become right. internalized. No, it's repetition. Repetition works. That's, that's an art, your, but that's a your art. Your ABCs, that's how you learn everything. It's repetition. You write it down, you study it, you look at it, and then you you, you know it and mm -hmm. you believe it. And so that that repetition that somebody's got, I, I want what's coming out of my mouth to not just be cliche. Right. I want you as the listener to believe what I'm saying, God loves you. Yes. It ain't over. Praise him no matter what, in yes. and out of season. It works. Praise works. Prayer works. Um, You've got the victory. I hear the sound of victory. Yes. I know that things are going to change for me. The louder my praise gets, yes. the better I feel. Maybe it doesn't change things, but I feel better when I start praising it. So those songs, those, 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 um, the, uh, subject matter yeah. and then to be able to come on and kind of put some extra stuff on there like to remind people that this is true this is this is something that you want to remember um i know that that's what works for me i have people that can literally repeat my ad libs now i'm a singer and i it's very rare that yeah. i remember another singer's ad libs right. unless it's like you said like a yolanda alisa page where it's like a line that they do a lot of time and maybe because yeah. i'm getting older i just like i don't know who's saying what but yeah um, right but right. it but i do but that repetition is so important i want people to know that god is so real and he loves them that's an art that's an art so, yeah so i'm yeah. gonna jump in here because everybody today is breaking the rules if they can't get on <laughs> social media they're texting me so i got i gotta <laughs> read some texts and some emails and some questions First of all, James Greer, who we've been our, wearing out our your friend, song, our friend. is on, on the line too. Yes. So Curtis says, once she hits that transitions towards the end of I Want God, it's like nothing else. It really ushers you into the presence of God, yes. into a true place of healing, restoration, and breakthrough. Your brother James Greer jumped on it. It's simply amazing, and it's not the norm. And then other people are like, it flows. And now... If all of that, you know, I got somebody text me, by the way, does she have a favorite song that's not gospel that, that she really likes? <laughs> so that that's what's happening right now. So I'll ask that question. Do you have a favorite song? What's your favorite song that's actually not gospel? Oh, God. Or even my favorite, artists. My favorite song that's not gospel? Um, Probably something from Donnie Hathaway. You mentioned Roberta Flack earlier, <sighs> but probably something from... um. Donny Hathaway, or I don't know if there's like one song. I have to think about that. Let me think about it. Right. Because okay. I'm, I'm but, Jesus but, in to, to four flat tires down. Yeah. Right, right. So, so, so check this out. I have this thing called the walk. And okay. um, I'm an observer of people. And um, when I watched you at West Angeles when we were getting our doctorate, I watched how, how gently you moved and maneuvered through the crowd. It wasn't like, I'm here, y'all. Check me out. Mm -hmm. It was just like, I'm part of the family and I'm a part of this process. But I also walk, watched you how you walk to the stage. You walk to the stage real gentle, downright soft. But then when you open that mouth, the walk is amazing. Um, have you ever watched yourself and see how you approach <laughs> the mic? Because I, I, I've literally watched you for years and I've been like saying, Oh, she got the walk. It's coming. But she's from it's New coming. York. She's from New York, so she she ain't soft all the way. She's from no, New no, York. No, I'm just saying that right. you know the energy. <laughs> okay, don't let us move taste um, fool you. <laughs> is that you? You know, and here's the thing: mm. when you come mm. from a place like New York, yes, you know you got skills, mm. so you don't have to you don't have to say nothing. You just walk in it. Mm. You know. So tell me about when you approach the mic, because every time I watch you approach the mic, it's real, almost uh 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 like a ballet, ballerina. We're she graceful. Comes, we're graceful, graceful. Mm -hmm. graceful. So talk to me about when you're coming to get ready to minister. What is that experience like? So the approach is, um, God, you asking me these questions going to make me cry. So the approach is gratefulness. Mm -hmm. The approach is, wow, God, you've allowed me another opportunity to do what it is I know emphatically that you called me to do. And I'm grateful, whether it's in front of 10 people or a thousand people or 10,000 people, the approach is always the same. Thank you, God. And then out of that gratefulness, um, once I start singing, once I start talking, that that switch kind of, I've got a switch back here on my neck, mm -hmm. like 
it flips up mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and it's and it's like okay now you Let's know go. get this job done mm-hmm. somebody's life is uh it, you know these moments somebody's life is in uh depending on you yes. a word from you mm-hmm. um the way that you sing something that you say um somebody's waiting to hear um mm-hmm. that from you mm-hmm. and so my prayer is that whatever he's he's assigned for me to do on that particular day that particular moment is that, that I get it done and so something about that just invigorates me i got a um a real dear pastor friend that's like, you know, you so gangster, you gangster with it. And I was like, I don't know. Like sometimes I can walk up and be like, okay, you know, this is not that day. Just kind of get the song through, you know, have a seat. Nobody needs to hear all of that. But it's just something about when I start thinking mm. and singing and thinking and singing and thinking and singing, yes. like it just goes, it goes left. And I, God gets all of me uh, all New Yorker down, all right. Marylander down. Right. Like he gets everything that I have because he's given me everything um, that I have and he's given me everything that I need. So let me ask you this question because Robert's a singer. I'm a preacher. Uh, they have banned me from singing. All I could do is the first three lines <laughs> and then they have to take it over. But um, Jesus, help but us. the one thing that I do know is after you finish preaching, you are you've expended so much that you are exhausted how what is your routine to rejuvenate Mm -hmm, yourself mm -hmm. after you have poured out Mm -hmm. into a a concert or a ministry opportunity so you know i just go and kind of i well i need to be by myself number one um and i really just find a quiet corner and i just sit and i just thank god for the opportunity again and then i pray my prayer is that my being there was effective to whoever it was supposed to be effective to. Mm -hmm. And so I think a lot of times as singers, as preachers, Mm -hmm. um, we want to bless like the entire house, right? Right. We want everybody that's in there to be blessed by what we do. But the reality of it is that that's not necessarily going to be the case. Most of the time Mm -hmm. there, I might go someplace and, and I sing, and that same person that you're talking about right now, oh my gosh, you're anointed every time you sing, you, uh, you open your mouth, whatever. I can go somewhere and they sit literally and look at me like I didn't do a thing. Like, you know, well, what time are we going to eat? Like, I wish right. you'd hurry up. Right. And so I leave the stage, I leave the stage, the pulpit or whatever that is. And I'm like, okay, God, like, wh- why am I here? Why was I here? Mm-hmm. Why did you have me here? And it'll be, I'll never forget. This one young lady walked up to me and she was like, I just had to get you. I can't believe I'm talking to you. Your music helped me from committing suicide. I never thought I'd get a chance to tell you that to your face or to meet you. And so in that instance, I know it wasn't even necessary, may not necessarily have been for the congregation or the audience, Mm -hmm. but it was for a setup for that young lady Mm -hmm. or that young man or that person to come be able to touch me and say to me, I I didn't believe that I could see you and tell you this to your face. And so they need to tell me and then I need to hear it Yes, because I need to go to the next assignment and the next assignment Mm -hmm. and the next assignment full in the knowledge that it's not about the numbers all the time, but it's about that one. If I can get one person, (laughs) if I can get that one person. Yes. Jesus. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Father. Yes. Thank you, Father. Yes, Lord. Yes. Then it's worth it. Yes. It's worth it. Yes. It's worth it. Yes. My Sorry. question. That's okay. My question to you is how did you get with Victor Johnson then years later with Richard Smallwood? Because I noticed you sign, surround yourself with powerful anointed people, even with your godson, Anthony Brown. You know, God is nice to me. Um, Victor Johnson, uh, went to, we went to church together. I, I, we went to uh, Great Mount Calvary Holy Church in Washington, D.C. That was my good, good, good church find um, when I was a college student and beyond. Mm-hmm. I did my first concert at Great Mount Calvary, and they were like, um, you know, we want you to do a concert. I was singing with a group at the time around the DMV area, yeah. and they were like, we want you to come do a concert. And I was like, well, I'll tell the group, you know, I'm going to let them know that we, you want us to do a right. concert. And they were like, no, you. And I was like, me? <laughs> I don't do concerts. And they were like, yeah, we want you to do one. So, um, and I know this is a segue. I'll get to the other thing too, but this is why this, it'll come around. Um, But um, 
So I did the concert. My family came from New York. They were like, we don't know how this going to work out because you don't even, we don't even know you like to sing. And <laughs> I did a concert and literally my family came, my coworkers came, wow. everybody just cried. Daniel Winans was in the audience. Wow. I went on to record with him. Pastor Donnie McClurkin was in the audience. I grew up uh, going to church. Our church is fellowshipping with him. So I knew him as high water pant wearing Donnie yep. singing with his sister, um, <laughs> right. playing that piano. And I, I shout out to Pastor Donnie McClurkin right. because seeing him and seeing him be different yes. than the typical choir the choir directed the harmonies, the the lushness of yes. the, the the arrangements that he did yes. just really resonated with me. And so everybody that I've been allowed to kind of be around, including um, uh, Victor Johnson and Free, who gave me my first opportunity oh. to record a song that I wrote called Practice What You oh. Preach. Um, which we play. Which we play. Week. We play this week. You do? Oh, yeah. Yes, we do. I'm trying to tell you everything, Marette. Uh, uh, I told uh, you I went, we went is back. On, is on the spin. Yes. You know. Oh my God. <laughs> Thank you so much for that. But and actually I hadn't seen Victor in years. I just saw him about a month or two ago. And I literally like freaked out and just cried right. because they don't, you know, people don't have to be kind to you. No, they they don't, don't have to open the door. I wasn't a member of the choir, but he brought me in to sing with the choir and write my own song. And he didn't take any of my publishing. Wow. Like the list can go on. Okay. Wow. The list can go on and on and on. Right. And so um, those opportunities with Victor, with I'm um, singing around the DMV area with other groups and with myself, um, Richard Smallwood saw me. Um, he heard me. Um, the group I was singing with at the time, the leader, went to church with him and they met, they were on the ministry department mm -hmm, together. Mm -hmm. And so we sang at the church. So he saw me, I won't say out the corner of his eye. And when he sat down to put the whole choir together, God gave him all the members in a dream. Wow. And I happened to be in that dream. Wow. So he didn't even know how to reach out to me. He just said, somebody find Marette Brown for me. Marette mm -hmm. Brown. Mm -hmm. yeah, I don't even know if I was Clark then. Mm -hmm. Find her for me. And he asked me to come to a choir rehearsal because he was putting a choir together for what I know was to be a, to be a one time choir record. Uh, the richest Smallwood singers. Right. What can we say about them? So I know that he went to put this record together for one time and the rest with that is history. He let me sing a little song called Angels mm -hmm. um, and um the choir that was supposed to do one record 27 is years. still together is still uh, making music okay. 27 years so uh, yes. I, I gotta say this again the rules are still being broken because we're heard in <laughs> over 49 different countries right so now we got liberia west africa on and we are working with them to do a three-day festival yes we are in liberia Hallelujah. and i already know that uh apostle solomon is like saying i want Marette. Uh, uh, the comes. So, Let's go, Marette. Uh, so I got to reach out to you yes. and, and and talk to you about that. Yes. We're, we're working and trying to get it all together. But folks is coming in from near and I'm far. I'm getting texts too. And I am not going to cry today. But, uh, um, but I want you to understand that in the midst of all that we've gone through. Come on. Your songs have been a bridge Stable. to carry us through and over. Stable. And we, when, 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 when we're on this radio station, mm. and even when we're tired and we're fatigued because we've been traveling, and everything else, mm, mm, mm. we'll put on that "I Want God" and and the different songs that you have given us, angels. That, Mine is I just want to praise really, you. Yep. Yeah, well, see, because my praise team singer, we sung it last Sunday. Well, I, I'm just saying, and and Robert, and so I have to, I'm gonna tell on Robert. Oh God, what I do this time? We, you know, we pick <laughs> songs that we we feel are hits. Yes. In that we're going to make them hits before everybody else jump on them. So by when everybody else jump on them, we'll be like, oh yeah, we knew that already. Right. That's how our program director does. She picks the hits before it even hits the hits. Right. And so James Grill and you did this this song together. Ugh. Robert make me play that song every, every day. single day. And we're at, we're <laughs> media we're media based. We we're, we're twenty one of the twenty five shows you. of internet yeah. stations. And, yes. and he said, Man, he said, just listen to the words. And I I'm, I'm listening to the words and I'm feeling the words. Robert up there crying. I mean, every single day. So my question to you is how is it that throughout your career mm. 
you know how they say, I don't think you ever had a bad song. I was thinking that this morning. You know what I'm saying? How do you, I mean, what, where is that? Are you writing all of your own songs? Because I know that uh, your, your uh, is it her nephew or her, her, her go- godson? Her Anthony godson Brown does a lot of stuff with drop her. Drop some things for you. How are you, you know, do you just say, okay, Lord, um, once I pick a song, you, I need you to sprinkle that anointing on it and let me go? Uh, tell me, because I'm just trying to figure it out. It's hit after hit. I, so um, thank you for that. Um, again, that is my blessing. It is my belief that really the song matters and our voices matter, of course, how we present the songs matter, but the lyrically soundness, the doctrinal soundness of a song really matters. And what I've been able to do is to take these songs that speak to me first. Mm -hmm. They minister to me first before you ever even hear them. Mm -hmm. And then I um, ask God to help me relay that to you. And so he's been, he's done that for me consistently. I want to shout out, um, of course, Anthony Brown, my son, who I adore. I met him when um, him and group therapy, when they were in college, uh, they came up to me at a gospel music workshop of America Mm -hmm. at like three o'clock in the morning uh, in the back of a musical. And they were like, can we sing for you? And I was like, sure, sure. We went in a corner and they sang total praise and I was blown away. And the next day I was like, can you come sing with me? I got a showcase I have to do. Right. And they were like, yeah, they learned this music, showed up at the showcase, sang with me. And we have been connected ever since. It's really been an honor and a privilege to watch him yes. navigate his way through the music industry. Grammy nominated. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, uh, Dove award winning, back the truck up. Ten Stella time. award winning, yes. back the truck up. And any mother, mother figure, mm-hmm. stepmother, godmother, anybody mm-hmm. who doesn't want their children to go further mm-hmm. than they've gone yes. is not worth their salt. So it's an honor to be able to have sown into his ministry. Yes. And again, like you said, he wrote it ain't over until God says it's over. We were on our way to a Wilmington Chester Mass Choir rehearsal. I was writing some music for them. And I said, come get in the car with me and go. I want them to meet you. I want you to see, you know, how this rehearsal is, how we're getting together to record live. He had never um, written a song for a gospel artist before. Wow. And we got in the car to go to rehearsal. And he said, I got a song for you because we were just about done. We just finished uh, working on the rehearsal for the recording. And he said, I, I wrote another song I want you to hear. And he sang It Ain't Over to Me in the car, a cappella. By the time he got to the chorus, I was like, we're recording that. I'm adding that to the record. Wow. And the, and again, that song was was from his pen, but it spoke directly to me. Now, there were some challenges after we recorded that record. We had to wait almost three years for the record to come out. Wow. Um, and I literally was singing It Ain't Over on my closet floor, like, God, like, seriously? Right. Like, what is going on? Right. And so by the time it got to you, the same way that it carried me through my dark season, my waiting season, yes. is the same way I've watched it carry other people. So the answer to your question is, some songs I wrote, I write, and some songs God brings to me, and he allows me to be able to interpret them. Now, here's something that wow. I didn't know. So. A lot of emotions are coming out right yes. now. Our program director, who happens to also be my wife, right. she said, your song, It's Not Over, was in rotation in my mother's hospital room as she oh. transitioned. Wow. And um, there was certain selected music that was being played mm-hmm. uh, during my, my, my uh, mother's, my mother-in-law's uh, battle. Mm-hmm. And my, my wife was saying that that was a song that was in constant rotation. Um, and I've heard that before. Through. Many people have come to me and show, told me that they've shared um, music. And I'm talking strangers and I'm talking friends. Like to have my friends mm. um, tell me that something that I've sung has has blessed them. You mm. know, because your friends don't have to. They know you. They right. know you're good, the bad, and the right. ugly. Right. But for them to be able to still feel like something that you do ministers to them. I sang It Ain't Over to My Sister as she was taking her last breath. Wow. So I had to be able to minister that to her Jesus. and then turn around and try to tell the world while I was watching my sister pass. So I yeah. get it. I get yeah. it. And so that's what I try to bring to the pulpit, to the stage, right. wherever I am. Right. I'm this. I'm just like you. I'm flesh and blood. Oh, yes. Mm-hmm. yes. Yeah. 
in the we place. all had the same similar wow. experiences mm-hmm. and i've never put what i do or, or who i am or what god has blessed yes. me to see or do and be able to accomplish above anything that anybody else does yes. god is able to use all of us yes. for what his purpose is and i hope that somebody can hear my music and know that i didn't have a lot of money i didn't know a lot of people I didn't know anything about the music industry. All I knew was what he told me was to go get somebody else. And I was like, God, I'm an overachiever. I don't want to just get my family or just get my my 10 friends. I want to get the world. Who am I supposed to reach? And he allowed me to do just that. I prayed two prayers when I started. I said, God, since you saved me, let me get somebody else. Take my music further than I could physically take it and move me out of the way. Those Mm -hmm. two prayers right there. And I've watched him do that for you to say that somebody in Liberia, I've never been to Africa, but my music has been to Africa. I've never been to Asia, but my music is in Asia. There's cities here in the States that Mm -hmm. I've never been to countries I've never been to, but I know emphatically that my music has gotten there and that's nothing short, but God answering prayer. He Mm -hmm. still answers prayer. He still does amazing things. He still does exceedingly abundantly above all that we can ask or think. You just have to give it to him Mm -hmm. And that's what I did. And I'm living my dream, my dream for my life that I didn't even know was my dream lined up with the will of God for my life. And that's what's got me on this call with you today. My continuing, take the hits and still say yes, Yes. make the mistakes, but still say yes. And that's why I'm here with you today. It really is an honor and a privilege. And so just thank you to know that you're playing my music. Yes. I'm not there to hear it. I'm not, you know, now I can't because of the internet. Thank you, Jesus. But to know that my music, the old songs, the new songs, and the songs that are yet to come are being played on your station and they're impacting people and impacting you. It's just very overwhelming. There's there's two things that I want you to know. Mm -hmm. One is Robert Earl Dean is known as the Wikipedia of gospel. Uh, <laughs> if if it if it happens in gospel, I don't care if he wasn't born yet. Robert will say <laughs> yes. And who played on that song is this? Robert That's is known awesome. as the Wikipedia of gospel, and that is one of God's gifting um, that He has had to be able to connect the young and the old, and yes. everywhere that He goes. And I, I'm proud uh, that He is my partner. I'm glad um, to be in yeah. doing this type of music. And then the other thing, um, my wife who did not grow up in church, right. being the program director, she designs the music to reach the body yes. and to meet the yeah. masses from all walks of life. Mm-hmm. Um, but she's very selective on uh, the music so that it does minister and reaches a broad span. Um, I want you to know that the family here now, everybody's, you know, we're all good. We're all trying not to cry and everything. Right. But now everybody's telling me I got to bring you to San Diego. So I was going to say we, she's we, coming we, to San Diego. We, we have to do that. So I have two assignments and I want to be very clear. One, yes. I got to work out, figure out how we're going to get you to Liberia. Yes, we're going together. And, and then yes. um, also how we get you here to San Diego because the folks is the folks is ro- rolling up on me like gangsters right now about <laughs> you. Uh, so e- Even Sonia Griffith. The leader yep. of L.A. Mass. That's when you bless yes. me. Yes. She she says how much she loves you. I don't get um, texts doing interviews. Yeah. I'm getting them now. Yeah. And we also have uh, uh, Sade, uh who's over the Pudoy. modern choir. Children's she's over choir. The, she's over the children's choir. She's like, oh, yes, I love her. They Everybody's chiming in right now, uh, giving you. me direction and orders. And that is amazing. Mm-hmm. Um, because we interview everybody. Yes, we do. Um, at uh, on your level, but mm-hmm. this is the first time we've had this. Like all, everybody chiming in, and it's it's blessing me because when we met you for the very first time, you were so humble. I didn't even know it was you at first because you were. You know how you go into a lunch line and everybody's in the same line, right? And you don't know that you know Stevie Wonder's behind you until somebody says, oh, "That's Stevie Wonder." Right. You know, and, and I, I turned around and I'm a taller guy. So I had to kind of look, that is her, you know. <laughs> right. So, Robert, go ahead. Just... <laughs> okay. So how, your radio too. Let's talk about your radio show. We want people to know the fullness of your splendor. Yeah. I have a radio show, 6 a.m. to 10 a.m. on Philly's Favor uh, that's Monday through Friday. You know, door opened for me in radio 
um, about seven years ago, I was with Radio One. Uh, they opened a door for me to, to broadcast here in Baltimore. And it was something, you know, you have those dreams that you're like, oh, no, nah, that can't happen. Mm -hmm. um, but I watched God make a dream happen already. So now I was like, well, you know, you've done enough, Lord, but he can do even more. And so that drive, that passion that I had for um wanting to use my voice for radio, connect those songs. So it's just like you, Robert, I've been, I've been at this a long time. I know who's singing what, I, I, you know, I know the history. And so mm -hmm. to be able to connect those songs, connect those dots, and then um, be able to just uh, present that to people um, was just something that I wanted to do. And so being able to do that mixed with a little jokes, mm -hmm. a little cry, yeah. a little uh, experiences, a little word, a little scripture, a little news, like it just kind of fits me. And so right. I'm just grateful for uh, the opportunity that I have to still do radio. I lead worship at my church. I was at church last night, uh, bullying my praise team. Yeah, that's me. Um, <laughs> so I was like, come on now, let's go get this part. And so um, it's an honor to lead worship at my church. I go to Bethel Amy church in Baltimore now. Um, my husband's from Baltimore. So we came up from College Park and got to Baltimore. So it's an honor. Shout out to my pastor, Pastor Claiborne, who allows me to be me. Mm -hmm. um, and just just the doors that he's opened up for me. Um, I'm just really, really grateful. And I want to say, and I'm not sure if you're going to get to this, but I have new music coming out today. Um, yeah, today I have a new single that came out today as we speak. We have it. Um, and it's just a newer version of I, I Just Want to Praise praying. You Forever. So um, it went viral on YouTube, on, on TikTok, I'm sorry, the tickety talk last yeah. year um, again. And I was like, oh, my goodness. I said, I should just like just re-record it right. because I think people think it's a song that I don't sing all the time. I sing it all the time. Everywhere I go, I sing it and I will be singing it until Jesus comes back to get me. Yeah. I have no problem with that because just as happy as you are to hear it, I'm that happy to Who sing it. Who wrote it? So that's a good question. <laughs> so I didn't write it. A friend of mine, Paul Wright, uh, years ago, asked me to record it. Uh, he was recording uh, in Nashville, Tennessee with what now is Mount Zion's choir mm -hmm. um, in Nashville. And uh, he said, come sing on it. And I was like, well, okay, but there's no verses. Like, there's nothing for me to sing. Right. Like, the song sings itself. And he was like, well, you come and just, and just do you. Mm -hmm. I didn't know what that meant. I didn't even know if I had established what you was, but I went and I sang it. And for that version of the song, which is a familiar song, like everybody knows it from the from the deacons to the ushers to the mm -hmm. kids to the um, everywhere. For that version, my version to be the one that everybody gravitated to really still kind of blows my mind. So we went. I did a newer version. I grabbed my singers, my band, and said, come on, let's do this. And that actually is available now for download on iTunes and Spotify mm -hmm. and Deezer and Tidal and um, everywhere you can get music. And I'm going to definitely make sure that you get it. We got so it. That we got it. You got, uh, we, 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 play we, we, we worked it out, sister. You, yes. you, you reached out to me yesterday about trying to get it to us, but we was going to work our magic and get it. Okay, magic. <laughs> so, so, so uh, I don't know if you have a pen and paper, but I'm I'm getting directions now. Uh, they want to know if you for me. You, yes. Uh, okay. <laughs> if you if if July 29th is available on your schedule, uh, everybody's making demands right now. He's to, actually changing things. San Diego. He's changing yeah. things. Yeah. They they want to know if if you're available. We we do um um. A Gospel. nonprofit concert mm -hmm. on the flight deck of the USS Midway. It's a retired. Only, oh, that's so fun. It is the only gospel concert on a aircraft carrier. And it's a, a museum. Um, and um, this year is what we call Praise Fest. And so we're, we're bringing different praise teams uh, in uh, for our 10th anniversary. And now okay. they're all saying, you got to see if she's available. You know, we, we have the choir. We have the band. We just need her, you know. And so they want you to check your schedule. And then when we get offline. We, we, I, uh, I, I got her connections. Yeah, we have to. Wait, but look, yeah. why, my schedule is a paper schedule, okay? Yeah, see, there you go. <laughs> right. It, so, old school always works. Yeah. 
Listen, if it ain't on paper, it never happens. That's, That's right. Uh, yeah. But but you see how you see how I'm telling you this is a different interview. Uh, yes. uh program directors jumping in, everybody's jumping other in. Other artists. Other artists are jumping blessed. in. And that just I got a question says too, to the person that you are. You know, um people are telling stories about when they met you, when mm -hmm. they talked to you, when they shared with you and you cried with them. Right. Um it's amazing. Uh, the effect that you have when you come into the room. Now we could go on and on, but I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna pitch it to you, okay. Robert. Calm down. Uh, 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 but Robert has some more questions, and we're gonna just, do something that we don't normally more. do, and that we're going to do the new music that came out. Yes. And then uh, we had a special request that needed you. Uh, they needed to be ministered to again. A second with, spin. It ain't over. So we're gonna do the new music. And then we're going to do the It Ain't Over after we finish this interview. And then you're going to end with my mine my, my with James Greer. Then he wants to end off okay. with James Greer. Okay, so I'm going to so be. So we're going to do a three Shout piece. out to James Greer. Yeah. Yes. So him. yes, sir. So you grew up Church of God in Christ like us. I did. We're Kojic too, hallelujah. <laughs> I grew, now, I grew up in Little now Zion my question, in Freeport. What Bishop did the White. Kojic music, how did it influence you? Growing up in the Church of God in Christ in our music, how did that influence you? Oh, gosh. You know, when you grow Kojic, you just, you are music. Like, you eat, you breathe, you sleep it, and there's nothing that that you don't hear. Like, you hear everything, every iteration every chord every mm -hmm. vocal like you hear things that you don't hear in other churches no disrespect that's right, right. it's the truth but something about and i'll give it to you know i don't go to a culture church right now right. I, I follow my husband i left i left and cleave to leave right. and cleave um but that that foundation i would not trade it for the world us either when i was growing up Bishop Hezekiah Walker would come to my church and sing. Bishop Timothy Wright, Bishop Alfred, Albert Jameson, like Don, like I said, Pastor Donnie McClurkin, um, Benny Cummings. Like Benny Cummings, King's Temple Mass. Mass. Would come to my church and I'd be sitting there like a little girl. I didn't know. I'm like, this is amazing. Jeffrey White, like in New York, like those Myrna people. Summers. Yeah, those, those choirs, those groups, those soloists, um, Rubenstein McClure. <gasps> Institution, like, institution, church. That's of God what Christ. I'm saying, Bishop J.C. White. Like all of that was my surrounding. Mm -hmm. I would not trade a minute. If you grew up in the Church of God in Christ or somewhere near it, mm -hmm. you have the best foundation for music um, that you didn't have to pay for. G yeah. Guess who just came out at their Church of God in Christ? It Lizzo. Ah, uh, really? Born, born and raised Church of God in Christ. That's amazing. Yeah. You know, one one of the things about it, because um, Robert Earl, um, we grew up. Um, uh, Bishop Blake is my uh, cousin, mm -hmm. and oh, um, and growing up under Bishop Blake Senior mm -hmm. as my uncle, um, he was always on the foreground. Yes. You know, um, he said, "Y'all want to play music?" He bought all the kids in the church mm -hmm. musical instruments, and then taught us how to travel and tour. Yeah. Because uh, everywhere he went, he wanted to bring the bat brass band. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And then you know we see so much. Uh, we're in radio and TV and everything else mm -hmm. because. We were one of the few churches that actually had a five camera video team um, way back back then. in the day. Um, and so um, we see how church plays a major role, be it Church of God in Christ, Baptist or, you know, yeah. apostolic mm -hmm. or AME. Mm -hmm. um, it plays a major role. I would like to end off with this because this is going to be a to be, to be continued. continued interview because now <laughs> now uh, so we can't call you auntie. So we're going to call you cousin. Right, we, yeah. we we gotta have cousin, uh, uh, cousin Net, to Nettie's back. Nettie's daughter or Nettie something because she has Nettie, Nettie in yeah, her name. We're gonna have we have Mo because I, I see it said Mo Clark. Right, but but <laughs> yeah. but her stuff is under Nettie. Okay, yes. Well, we we gotta have you come back and um and oh, and do it. part two of this interview. But what would you share with the young people today that are coming up in a very different world? Yeah. Um, what would you share with them? And then after that, I want you to tell people how they can get contact you, connect with you. And then we want to introduce the new song. So, you know, actually, I'm a mom. I have a 25 year old, a 22 year old and a 17 year old. Oh, wow. And some of the things that I see them have to witness in the world mm -hmm. um, just really blows my mind. I would say to a young person 
that God is the same. He's the same God yesterday, today, and tomorrow. And he will be there for you um, in your time of sorrow, in your time of disbelief of what's going on around you, um, in your time of joy, in your time of uh, stress, in your time of trying to make it through uh, school, uh, the things that you're threatened with that we didn't have to worry about when we were children. Mm -hmm. We didn't have to worry about somebody coming in with a gun to the school Come or on. not making it home from school or, or going to, away to college and not coming back home safe. That never was a thought in our mind. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm praying right now for the young people and I want them to know that even when things look out of control, God is still in control and God is still able to hold you in the palm of his hand. You don't have to rely on um, stuff but you can rely on him. You can cast your cares on him because he cares for you. And I know, um, you know, church is shifting and people's perception of God is shifting, mm -hmm. but God is not shifting. Mm -hmm. God is not changing. Mm -hmm. God is still yet on the throne. He sits high and he looks low yes. and he sees you. He cares for you. Yes. I have a song on my record that's coming out um, in the next couple of months that just says he loves me. If I could get the whole world to declare that, to believe that, that a breakup, my boyfriend left me, my girlfriend left me, my wife, my husband, I've lost a friendship. I lost this. Mm -mm. God loves you. You can lose everything and everybody. My God. But if you hold on to the fact that God loves you, that's enough for you to take uh, the next step and the next step and to keep living. And so I just pray that the young people know that past church but know that the God uh, who created this universe, you he knows you by name. He knows you. Yes. He's acquainted with you. And he's there for you every step of the way. Every step of the way. Um, if you want to find me on social media, um, you can go to Moret B. Clark. I'm on Instagram, mm -hmm. um, you know, Facebook and Twitter. It's Moret Brown Clark. And Moret is spelled M-A-U-R-E-T-T-E. -E. If you put that in any Google search, yep. um, you're going to find me. My parents did not know that they were marking me with a name that was just not anybody else's name. I have a twin brother named Maurice. Shouts out to him. And I came as a surprise to them. Uh, they already picked out his name. They thought they were having one kid. And then here I came sliding in. Wow. Uh, and my mother had twins, so they had to think fast on their feet. They came up with the name Moret, and it has carried me um, throughout my entire life. And I look forward to where it's going to take me. So Google Moret. Uh, you can go to my website, moretbrownclark.com. If you want to book me uh, in San Diego or beyond, uh, you can go to my website. And uh, the booking information is right there. You just fill out the questionnaire. He'll do it today. Gets back to you. Uh, I'm a, he'll wanna, do it, he'll I, do it I wanna, today. I want to call her and talk to her. I, you know, yeah, I, but I, we're I gonna just, book her the right way too. I, I, I know, but you okay, know, praise God. You know, Y'all are so cute. Look, <laughs> look yes, sir. Uh, you let me. Have this. Yes, you got it. You <laughs> got it. Praise God. <laughs> and I want to say uh, uh, again, thank you so much um, for your graciousness to me. I know that again, this was a long time coming, and it was all I take full responsibility. It was purposeful, though. God set it up for it to be yeah. today. People needed this interview today. Yes. Yeah. Yes, and, and I God, just thank you so much for not for allowing me the opportunity to be here. Yeah. I wasn't giving up, sister. I'm one of yeah, those. I know. I, I ain't know. giving up, sister. Because <laughs> Robert, Robert, Robert had advertised, and, and he was like, I, just, I know, I felt so bad. And, 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 and the thing was, mm -hmm. I said, I said and the folks was like sitting up there. You know how folks be looking at you like, we know you didn't have her. But they can't say that because we've had Yolanda, no, we've no, had Ricky, we've had everybody. The funny thing is, all the folks mm -hmm. are like, we know you didn't have her. That they all on the day like you really do have right. her. <laughs> tell them, tell them we come, we comes with it. God's Yay! before, he's before us. Yeah. God's before us. Yeah, but you know the funny thing about it is when I when I said to Robert, I said, well, Robert, did she think it was PM versus AM? She because did because a lot of times East Coast because people. you all do so many interviews mm -hmm. and yeah. um, you have to start asking the question. Was that AM or PM? Right, right. And so we started laughing yeah. about it, uh, about it, because you know we see people have that happen. And, it's and happening. It's yeah. it's a this a normal thing in the radio. And right. You, you reschedule. There's yeah. some folks that you 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 interview them just on GP, but then there's certain people that you want to talk that you to. You want to because of their impact. 
And you're one of those persons um, uh, that I really believe that the listeners today are like saying they, well, they're being demanding, you know, uh, they, they, yeah. they want to see you, you yes. know, somebody, you know, we have young and old. This yes. is not just the older people. We have young and old listening right now yes. and all of them are chiming in. So we want to thank you for being so gracious. We know that this, we, we don't believe in short 10 minute interviews or no. five minute interviews. We like to have the whole story. Yes. And we ain't even got to the whole story. And we, we go different. To part two. And we different. To get to the next yeah, door. Cause I got, awesome. I got questions. You know, uh, uh, that, that I didn't get to ask today. And I know Robert does because he's the Wikipedia, you know. Um, so with that being said, could you introduce the new version of I Want to Thank You? We're going to play it and then we're going to go and uh, uh, bless the people with It Ain't Over once again. So I want to tell everybody, thank you so much for making this song the soundtrack of your praise. And I just wanted to pay homage to that and give you just a, a, another version of how we do it when I'm out on the road. So this is, I just want to praise you. How long? Forever and forever. Brand new today. Right here on right GOD here. Radio. <laughs> right here, brand new. Right here on GOD Radio 1? Dot com. All right, take a listen. Yeah. 